Heemstra from Futurist.com. This is my outlook for 2010. We're going to be talking about five different themes that I see as playing out as major future trend areas in 2010. These five are aging and technology, energy, the economy, and jobs. And I'll be talking about each one of them in turn. Aging is a simple one, even though it's the most overlooked one. On January 1st, of this coming year, 2010. We will be exactly 365 days until the first baby boomer turns 65 years old. And then we enter into the true age wave, which everybody has been anticipating for so long. This story is a big one for 2010. It will be somewhat overlooked because it's kind of the last year to prepare for the true age wave. Because over the next decade, then every eight seconds, someone is going to be turning 65. And when we get to the year 2020, uh, we'll be uh, in living in a country in which there are uh, something like 37 Floridas. So I tell people, if you'd like to see the future, go to Florida and look around and you begin, begin to get a sense of what life will be like when nearly 20% of the population is over 65. Eventually, this age wave will have a very big impact on housing and on transportation, on retirement, on the nature of work, on the economy, uh, and of course on systems, social systems like Social Security. This will be a very big story, and it's a worldwide phenomenon, but a very powerful phenomenon here in the United States. The age wave is coming, and 2010 is the last year that we have to truly get ready for it. Now, the second trend area that I'll be talking about in my outlook for 2010 will be technology. Now, this is obviously a very big area. It will be a core economic driver as we come out of the recession in 2010, and there are several different technology development areas that are very exciting and, and interesting to pay attention to. The first one, I think, has to do with telepresence. There are companies like Cisco and uh, HP with their Halo system who have very high-end telepresence systems. And by telepresence, I mean not just sort of crude, rudimentary video conferencing on the internet, but true high-definition, even moving toward almost uh, three-dimensional kinds of video uh, communication. This is done right now in special kinds of rooms over special networks. But these companies are working on more robust systems for the normal office and even eventually for the normal home. And I think we'll see much more business use and even the beginnings of some home and personal use of telepresence. The second area is 3D communication. Avatar the movie is the first really big splashy uh, 3D thing, although of course there have been 3D movies in the past. But the same companies that are working on the 3D for Avatar the movie have been working on 3D television for the home. And while we may not see much of this yet in 2010, we'll see increasing news about the de eventual development of 3D entertainment systems for the home, and that will be a very big deal. Uh, also happening technologically will be the emergence of more and more tablet computers, both for reading devices like the Kindle or like the Sony e-reader, but tablet devices for you know, surfing the internet and for other kinds of uses. The biggest technology story, however, uh, of 2010, I think, will be this one, and that will be the emergence of the $100 genome. Take a swab of your cheek, send it into a company, get your entire genetic code, according to what we know about the genetic code up till now, get it uh, read out for $100. And we will then have seen the price come down from millions of dollars to hundreds of thousands to tens of thousands down to $100. And when there's a $100 genome, we'll see the beginnings of the true biotechnology revolution. So those are some of the technology fields to be watching for. When we move on to the third theme area, we'll be talking about energy as we continue this outlook 2010. We've looked at the aging population. We've talked a little bit about technology. Now we want to look at energy, and there are going to be two major energy stories, I think, in this next year. The first one will have to do with a phenomenon we've been talking about for a while, this concept of peak oil. People have been trying to determine when we will have used up half the oil in the world, even though there is still yet some oil to be discovered. Did we reach the peak of oil production in 2005 or in 2007, or is it sometime in the future? As the economy recovers in 2009 and therefore demand for energy begins to go back up, we're going to find out, I believe, in 2010 whether we're at the peak or whether the peak is still a few years off. I think we may discover that it has already happened, that is, we are unable to produce any more oil or at the very least, by the end of 2010, we should have a much clearer answer as to when this peak will actually be. 
It is likely to be certainly within the next decade, if not in this year. That'll be a big story to watch for. The second big st energy story in 2010 has to do with natural gas. There's been lots and lots of excitement about not just new discoveries of natural gas, but mostly new technologies for recovering natural gas from areas that we've known that it exists. And that is kind of dispersed among rock uh, under the earth. And so there are now these new technology systems for injecting chemicals and water and sand and slurries down under the earth, driving the natural gas out. Originally, the industry said, well, most of that stuff will come out with the gas, but it turns out, according to a recent study, about 80 to 90 percent of that material, which is pushed into the rock to push the gas out, stays there. And now there is increasing concern that this is going to eventually contaminate groundwater. And so regulators and legislatures are just beginning to pay attention to this and asking, should we regulate this new discovery and uh, uh, these new methods for recovering natural gas? I think this will be a big story in 2010, and by the end of the year, we will be, in fact, concluding that we need to put some more uh, thought into the residue left behind as we recover this natural gas. That will be the second big energy story. When we talk about the fourth theme area, we'll be turning to the economy as I continue my outlook for 2010. Will there be an economic recovery in 2010? Conventional wisdom says yes, there will be, but it'll be very, very slow. My belief is, and my forecast is, that the economic recovery has begun and that it will be more robust than the conventional wisdom says in 2010. There are three major reasons. Number one, it turns out that this recession, even though it has some very peculiar characteristics and is longer lasting than most, is in fact partly driven by an inventory drawdown and inventory systems that measure these things now say inventories are low. Manufacturing indexes have been low but are coming back and therefore as we come out of this economic a downturn into the recovery. We're going to see more of a need to build up inventory, to recover inventory, to go back into manufacturing, and that will drive a somewhat more conventional kind of recovery. That's one factor. The second factor is people are tired of a recession. There's a psychology to recessions. People, first of all, think, well, this is natural, this is normal, of course it is, and then we say it's worse than it ever has been. We've said that, and of course, in this case, it was partly true. But then people get tired of it, and the Christmas season 2009 may be an indicator that people are just tired of recession, so they go back out and they start to spend, even though the jobs have not yet really recovered. So psychologically, we'll be ready for a recovery, and I think that will be a driver. And then the third key area that will drive a more robust recovery will be the global economy. China, India, and others are not so much followers of the U.S. economy anymore as they are pullers of the U.S. economy. Instead of waiting for us to recover, then they recover, it may go in the other direction. Their recovery will pull the U.S. economy stronger and more and more strongly out of this recession. So my forecast is we'll see a more robust recovery in 2010. At the end of the year, we'll say we came back stronger and faster than we thought that we would, even though it may not be quite as fast as previous recessions. Finally, in, as we continue this outlook 2010, I'll be looking at jobs in the last segment. We've looked at aging, we've looked at technology, we've looked at energy, and we've looked at the economy. In this final segment, let's look at the future of jobs in 2010. We're at 10% unemployment. We've seen eras of 10% unemployment in the past, and when we've had those, people have worried that we will now have a jobless recovery, and that's a worry on everybody's mind these days. 2010, we'll see a return to job growth. Here at the end of 2009, we're still in a job loss kind of situation where we lose more jobs each measurement period than we gain. But in 2010, we will see that reverse. These job losses are getting smaller and smaller. And by the end of 2010, we'll be growing jobs. Will it be a jobless recovery? No. History says that eventually jobs will come back. When we were in the recession of the early 1980s, people really did seriously fear that we would see a permanent unemployment rate of 6, 7, 8 percent, and those fears are in the air again today. That will not happen. We will see a return to a more normal kind of job growth scenario. It may take a while. We'll be in it by the end of 2010, and then we will see growth in jobs for some time to come. That's my forecast. That's my outlook for 2010. Let's hope we have a great year. I'm Glenn Heemstra, and this is Futurist.com.